Hey, it's Craig Syracuse and welcome to another episode of Walk in Faith, the show where we go beyond the image and we discover who our guests really are. You might know them from TV, the big screen, or even the world of sports, but do we really know who they are as a person? Do we know what motivates them? Do we know what inspires them? Well, that's what we're here to find out. Joyce Smith and her son John have joined me before, but they're back today with their pastor, Jason Noble. Together, we revisit the miracle that saved John's life after he was submerged in freezing waters for over 15 minutes a story that has inspired the upcoming movie, Breakthrough. The cast and crew of the movie will join us later in the show, so be sure to stay tuned and walk with us. Rise and shine, breakfast is ready in 10 minutes. And don't make me come back up there. This is our town. It's a close-knit community, the kind of place where everyone knows everyone. Hi, Miss J. Hey, how are you girls? And we're always there for each other. Nice sermon, Pastor. Oh. What do you guys have on for the rest of the day? Well, John has a basketball game. Yeah, I've seen this guy hoop it up around here. This kid is so lit. Text your mom tomorrow and tell her when and where to pick you up. And, uh... Don't do anything stupid. Love you guys. Hey. Boys, get off the ice. We're training for the Olympics, sir. Cindy. John! He's been underwater for more than 15 minutes. It's going to be a recovery, not a rescue. I got something. We got him! We've done everything medically possible. There's nothing more we can do. <laughs> Please, God, send your Holy Spirit to save my son. A 14-year-old St. Charles boy who spent 15 minutes trapped underwater is continuing to fight for his life. I don't believe John will survive the night. You don't know my son. He is a fighter, so I need you to be the best for John, and you just let God do the rest. You are my pride and joy. I can't wait to see you shoot those baskets and run up and down the court again. The Smith family asked for one thing. Please pray for John. In the water that day, I was ready to give up, but then I hear this voice telling me, go back. Either I'm nuts or God's talking to you, but I don't believe in God. I believe, but maybe that only goes so far with something like this. I'm your pastor. I'm supposed to walk alongside you for as long as it takes. Did you see the Facebook page? It's gone viral. Call me. I hope he's gonna be okay. We're not gonna get through this alone. Whatever you have for me, for Brian, for John, Well, it's great to see you guys again. You know, great I've been pretty you. close to the story. What is it like to be here? I know we spoke about it a few months ago about the potential of a film, and and now we're here. What is it? What, what kind of emotion are you guys dealing with? It's incredible. I mean, uh, just to see the, to see how quickly it's come together, and to see how God is just from every aspect has just put it together. I mean, so to be able to be here. I mean, I think our word for this week is surreal. You know, like just like amazing. You know, to be on the set of Breakthrough at this moment, and uh, to see how God's put it together. We pulled on the uh, set today and just see trailer after trailer after trailer. Mm -hmm. It just kind of blows you away that, you know, this is real and it's happening right now. They're making breakthrough and we're part of it today. And see so, the names on the trailers. See the names you know? on the trailers, you know, and it all becomes real to yeah. you. This is really going to happen. I mean, yeah, I mean, the Holy Spirit, like you said, has been present throughout the whole story. Right. Yes. Have you seen him? I mean, have you seen anything or heard any stories like on set where it sort of validates our beliefs? Um, I had spoken with one of the actresses, uh, Rebecca Staub on Sunday night and she just started telling me, you know, she says, I've worked on on a lot of places, but she said nothing that is as cohesive as what it has been here. And she says, this has just been a pleasure to work on. And not that the other places were bad, but this was special for her. And to hear how many of them say, we read the book and yes. we were so moved by it. Yes. I mean, you know, so you hear those stories of people just being personally moved by the story. Have that are part of one or have you heard anything, John? Oh, I mean, you know, just meeting Marcel Ruiz today, you know, he seems like a good kid, and it's, 
you know, it's weird, you know, that he's playing me a little bit, but, you know, having someone that's that kind and humble, you know, playing you, it, it's reassuring. For sure. I think I think the Holy Spirit helped with your character too, Tofa uh, Grace. You better believe it. I was it, like, yeah. oh my God, yeah. that's a great character. He's done a great job. The, yes. We were here and watched one of the scenes today, and it's just awesome. It's great to see how God just put it together. It's amazing. Yeah. And I mean, throughout the book and throughout the story, the power of prayer. Yes. What did you, I don't know if I asked you last time, but what did you say to God when, when John was laying in the hospital? Uh, that conversation started before then, <laughs> loudly in my car. <laughs> But just that, you know, God, please, you can't take your gift away from me. This is something we prayed for and you gave me. And just to go into the room and again, just say, Holy Spirit, please come and give me back my son and, you know, hear the reports of what happened during that time. And, and not that composed either. No, 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 no. And I don't care what they say. I was not talking that loud. <laughs> But, you know, I thought I was being very quiet, but I wasn't. And, uh, but, you know, again, I think God was in that, you know, people heard this and then afterwards they heard that, you know, my son came back to life, you know. So I know God takes things and uses them in his own way. And, you know, just like he's gonna use this movie breakthrough. I, there's, he's already out there working on people that need to see this and is it, that it will make a change in their life for them, so. Especially even the people that are here today, the people right. that are working on the set. Yes. I yeah. mean, we're all, for some reason, we're all here for right. the same reason, but. Right. And would you, I mean, Pastor, you, you consider this a miracle, right? I mean. Oh, well, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, it's one of the most incredible things I've watched, you know, just to be, uh, have a front row seat. I'm thankful that Joyce and Brian and John let me be a part of it. But to see the front row seat of God just at work, there's no question in my mind. There's no, I mean, it's a, it's a, it's a miracle. And I believe God did it for them and he can do it for other people. What do you hope people walk away with after watching this film? You know, uh, the word hope's been thrown around and that's it. But I hope people, you know, when they leave the theater or even close the book for the final time, that they realize that God has a purpose, mm -hmm. you know, for everyone. But if you just follow that purpose, you know, he'll use you in terrific ways to reach people that were so unlikely to you. And I just think, you know, through all of it, that, that the word purpose goes well with, you know, this whole project. What do you think your purpose is? What do you think the main purpose? My, it took me a while to figure it out, but finally after prayer and God just speaking to me and laying it on my heart, um, looking forward to becoming a pastor um, and to study, you know, him for the rest of my life and you just grow closer to him and do the best I can to lead as many people to him so I can fist bump him in heaven one day. Hey man, <laughs> we're gonna fill heaven. <laughs> and do you think, so do you think this whole, like everything that happened throughout your life from the adoption to, you know, the tragedy, do you think that was all part of God's plan? Yes. Even today? Without a doubt. I, just sitting back and you know, you know, I, sometimes I can't sleep and mom's always in her chair and just going out there to talk to her and you know, her praying for me from when I was 17 to praying for me when I was 14 and continuing to pray for me for the rest of my life. And just one thing, she always tells me as I'm dating now, she says, no one's gonna love you as much as your mama. It's true. So, you know, just having, <laughs> just having her as, you know, my backbone, it's amazing. God bless you guys. God bless you. Always here to help you. Hey, Thank you. you. Same. We appreciate it. Yeah. See you. God bless you, man. So I was watching a post last week that Devon, he posted something on, I think it was Instagram, and he wrote about uh, being prepared for God to answer our prayers. And he was referencing you, that you were sort of preparing yourself for this role or this opportunity. Can you explain what he meant by that? Yeah, you know, what I think he might have meant was um, that our tragedies are actually our triumphs and that you know, the things that I've gone through personally in my life have been really challenging, as we all have had many challenges, but that it all led me to this point to tell this really incredible story of of a family who came through something that is sort of, it's really hard to wrap your head around. And so I think that while it took me 12 years, 13 years almost, to get to the place of what I want to do, obviously with acting and telling stories, um, that it all happened exactly as it's supposed to, just as with, with John and with um, the entire Smith family. You know, whether it's bringing their family together as a unit, whether it's understanding that John is purposeful and he didn't think that before, and bringing their, you know, Brian and Joyce together and just renewing everybody's faith in the town or the country 
or um, within their church, you know, just renewing the faith of, of the, the miracles that, that we get to see through, through their experience. Their, their tragedy is now becoming their triumph. And that John is, you know, speaking to schools and speaking to people and wow, like it's, an, it's incredible, it's incredible. Why do you think God gave you this opportunity? Oh my goodness. Whew. Um, you know, sometimes I, I ask myself the same thing. I'm like, how, how did I? What, how, why me? Um, but then I think, why not? Like, why not? Why not me? And maybe, you know, just sort of for me to reiterate that, like, in my faith, that this was exactly what was supposed to happen at this time, and I was ready to do it. And while sometimes I think, like, oh, my gosh, it's such a huge feat to tell this really beautiful, true story, um, I've gone through the things I have to, to do so. So somebody's trusting and believing in me. <laughs> so, yeah. And what, you, and what do you hope this film does for you beyond fame and financial mm. gain? What do you hope it does for your soul? Like, what do you desire? Oh, yeah, it's never about fame or financial gain with me in, in any capacity because I've been, you know, I've hand, hand to mouth. Like, that's how I live most of my life. And so I made it a point that when any time I take on a project, I want it to be something that's going to be life changing in a positive way for myself, for the audience, for the people included. And I think that it just further like deepens my faith and telling a story of, of a miracle only just affirms that like they happen and they happen all the time for me. I mean, every single day is such a gift and so is you know, this role in this movie for people who are going to be a part of it. It's beautiful. Yeah. And you know, a power of prayer surrounds the film. And I know you yeah. mentioned a few times today about your mom went yeah. through a, a medical sort of condition. Yeah. Did you ever, did you ever rely on your faith or did you pray at that moment? Oh, absolutely. Can you share with us? Absolutely. When, when she went into the hospital, you know, I said to my sisters and to my family that like, we will only speak positive thoughts, you know, and that's what's so crazy because even word for word, Grant who's the writer of the, of the screenplay, said like we will only speak life over John. And that's what I said about my mom. And obviously didn't even know about the story, didn't know the script was gonna happen. And I said like, there's no room for negative thought. There's just, there's just not. And if we can have this collective consciousness of love and faith that like, it will, you know, she will be restored. That like, there's not even a thought of not hap it not happening. So um, yeah, definitely. I pray all the, t all the time, all, all the time. Yeah. What do you think the ultimate plan is for your life? Oh my gosh. <laughs> um, I sure hope it is to be of service and to touch other people's lives and do God's work to do what I, I don't know what that, that exactly looks like just yet, but I hope it's to show that like unconditional love and of ourselves and of course of other people. So That's great. I yeah. think you're on the path, especially oh. with this film. Yeah, I, I think so. Thank you so much. Yeah, thank you. It. Thank you. Of course, great. yeah. You. So I was actually fortunate enough to meet Joyce and John a few months back when they released the book, and I knew right away, I said, this is, this is a story, like, you know, it, it really touched my heart. What was your immediate reaction, Josh, after reading the script? I mean, was there any, were you skeptical at all? Like, how did you sort of, you know, take in that script and process it? I immediately did what I imagine a lot of people will do after they see this movie is they'll go online and research it. You know, and, and researching the story it was, and I do vaguely remember seeing a, a news report about it, um, and it just being one of those, my parents are both in the medical community, um, one of those things that, you know, is beyond medical science. It's it's truly uh, not just a miracle, it's, it's extraordinary at the most um, amazing levels of human experience. And... Um, but at the same time, I was so moved by the script, uh, and I keep saying this, but every time I've read the script, it gives me the goosebumps. And you know, that's what you hope for, to be part of a project, but also to go see a movie or read a book that just deeply touches you and deep, deeply fills you with um, like emotion, like you mm -hmm. say. And in this case, very beautiful emotion. Was there any part that stands out that, give, that gives you goosebumps? Without a doubt, there's the scene, you know, which my understanding has really happened, where the community came together and they held ha hands and sang both surrounding the, the hospital and in the hospital and in the room with John. And that moment in particular, I, th I just found so profoundly beautiful. And um, this community, the way it came together and the way that 
you know, the Facebook page that they created went viral and that people were praying all over the world. And there's something about that that I, I just am so touched by. And Marcel, what was your take after reading the script or hearing the story? I was, yeah, it, it really hit me and I was very emotional. It was the first time that I've read something and I've actually like cried. It was very powerful and that's why immediately after I read it, I really wanted to be a part of this. And I think when someone reads something like this, they'll usually think like about their family and what could happen if, if something like this actually happened to your family. And it helps when you're acting because it just, you really don't like have to act in those moments. It, the story's so emotional that you just go with it. Great, and, the, and you know, throughout the book, the, the power of prayer is, is present throughout the whole film, or the whole book, I should say. Do you believe or do you agree with that prayer played a part in the story? Either one of you? Oh, I think absolutely. Yeah. I think Coming there's together, no yeah. doubt. I mean, her her conviction, her power, her her the, Joyce, the mother, the way she was so committed to her idea that something could be done differently, and, and the way she pushed the doctors, and I think that really came from an internal belief in prayer. And and I know for so many people in my life, prayer is an adamant and, and a deeply important part of their life um, on a daily basis. And I think, you know, there is no doubt, however it expresses itself for some people, it's meditation, for some people, you know, however it may um, form, uh, I think in this case it was incredibly clear that within this community and within this family and within particularly this mother that, that it absolutely adamantly impacted the story. Yeah. And let me ask you, after each project, must, you must sit and reflect and say, what was the purpose or why did I take on this project? What do you hope to gain if this, beyond fame or financial gain, what do you hope to really, like what do you desire if this project? You know, every movie, or particularly everything I, I come, in con or come in contact with that I'm a part of, that I decide to go, you know, in this case, away from my son who's five years old, who I, you know, love more than anything on earth, to, sp to go away from him and spend time is a, is a commitment to me and a, and a challenge for me, and therefore I look back and hope in this case in particular, am I putting something good out into the world? And I'm not only putting something good out into the world, but I'm, I'm putting something that, that makes people feel inspired, that, is, that makes people feel um, is a beautiful thing to be a part of. And that probably by far outweighs financial or fame or anything. It, it, it's being a part of something that is good. My son said to me just yesterday, he said, you know, Dad, I think you should only do true stories. And I was like, <laughs> all right, <laughs> okay, you're five years old, but I think it's a good choice. Yeah. <laughs> well, thank you so much, guys. I appreciate this. Yeah, thank, thank you. you. Absolutely. Thank you for sitting with me. You know, you posted something last week, I think it was about Chrissy on, I think it was Instagram, how you said yeah. that she sort of, she was preparing for this opportunity. Yes. Can you tell me how you prepared for this opportunity this day? Yeah, oh my goodness. I mean, I, I wanna give a little bit about that. What I meant, uh, you know, with that post is that, you know, first of all, Chrissy Metz is one of the most inspirational people I know. Uh, so powerful. And her story, I mean, you know, literally she went from obscurity you know, two years ago to now being known all around the world. Uh, and, and I love it because this is the what God can do. You know, so many times we spend most of our life frustrated. When is God gonna, you know, show up? And God just saying, get ready, get ready. Because when you go to from, from obscurity to notoriety in 24 hours, are you gonna be ready? And what was so fascinating about Chrissy is that before anybody knew her, she was in acting class. She was doing her work. She was going to auditions. She was putting in the time. So when it came time to go, she was ready. And so I talk about this all the time, like you gotta be ready now. Don't wait until the opportunity because if you wait till the opportunity, it's gonna be too late. So for me, in terms of preparation for this moment, man, I've spent, you know, I've been in, in Hollywood for over 20 years. <laughs> and I spent about 18 of those 20 years preparing to one day make my own movies. From starting as an intern, to working as an assistant, to working as a junior executive, to working as, a, uh, as an executive um, at a studio, all of those were preparation years where I learned how to you know, operate on a set, learn how to you know, look at a budget, learn how to work on a script. So this moment is a moment that I could not succeed at if I hadn't already been prepared for. 
You know, and during those times, like during those moments when, you know, God hasn't answered your, your prayers or your plans, yes. it sometimes it becomes discouraging. I mean, throughout your career, I know. Yeah. Oh, I yeah. mean, every time I see you smiling, but it's yeah. got to be difficult, right? It's oh, gotta yeah. Be, it's got to be times in your life where you, like, sort of question. Oh, how yeah. How do you overcome those? Or how did, how did you overcome those moments? Oh, man. You know, um, uh, yes, I, I listen. I, I have discouragement all the time. You know, the, even, even though things are happening, there's other things I'm saying, God, I want this to happen, too, you know? Yeah. So the way that I do it, it's twofold. Um, I believe it's the Apostle Paul that says, you know, forgetting those things that are behind and straining towards those things that are ahead, right? So it's like I forget and I strain at the same time. It's a continuous action going in both directions at the same time, right? And so I do a similar thing where it's like instead of just forgetting what has happened, I try to remember, okay, God has allowed this, 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 and this to happen. So if he's allowed this, 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 and this to happen, why would you doubt now that that, that, and that's not going to happen? So I go back and I look at my past and say, okay, God, right, right, okay. So that gives me hope. And then I say, okay, what's the work I need to do now to prepare? So I go back, sift through the past to get hope. And then I say, what do I need to do now to prepare? Because every moment in frustration, every moment in discouragement is a moment not being spent in preparation. So I, I fight with that. That's, that's the tension that I manage to stay in that place of expectation and preparation so that when things happen, uh, it'll just be a manifestation of what God already promised and I'll be ready to meet the opportunity. That's great, that's a great answer. You know, and, and you know, Joyce and John's story, I mean, I believe, you probably believe the same that, you know, everything's sort of part of God's plan, right? Yeah. I believe in God's plan. So do you think the adoption to, to John falling in the ice, to uh, him being healed in the movie, do you think that's all part of God's plan? Well, I, I think it's all part of God's plan without a doubt and I also believe that, that God using the story to reach others is a part of his plan. I mean, one of the things that, that strikes me the deepest about the movie is the adoption part of it. Uh, you know, I'm not adopted. I have adopted people in my family. You know, one of my uh, nieces, you know, she's adopted and, and we've always had people that have been adopted in our family. And that is so powerful to me that, you know, when your, your birth parents don't want you for whatever reason, the, you carry that with you. And so I do hope a movie like this and by John being so open and transparent and sharing his story with the world that God is going to use it to bring healing to many people that are adopted and have a wound related to that, that a film like this might help resolve and heal it for them. And why do you think God picked you to tell the story? Man, I don't know. You know what I mean? What He said he'll talk to a fool, right? <laughs> so I don't know, man. I, I don't know. I, I, all I do is I'm, I'm, I try to be obedient and do what he's called me to do and uh, why he's chosen certain things, I don't know. You know, when, when, I, when I get to heaven, I'll have to ask him, Lord, why did you use me this way? And see what he has to say. Well, thank you so much for this opportunity. Of course, Appreciate thank you. Appreciate it. God always, bless you. always. God bless you. Good to see you. Always. Thank you so much for this. You know, I was fortunate. I actually, I met John and Joyce when they were doing their sort of the book tour, mm -hmm. and that story stuck with me for all these for all these months. What was your first impression when you heard the story? Were you skeptical? Did you have some doubts when you when you heard that John was lifeless for so long? Well, when I read the script, I saw it unfold as a story, so I knew it was true, and I knew that it was medically documented, and. I can't believe that it happened, but I do believe that it happened, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you know that he defied every rule of medicine and science to stay alive and to walk out of the hospital on his own and to be as intelligent and prescient and vibrant as, as John Smith is. And when I actually met John himself in my office, you know, it's that was probably one of the more emotional experiences that I've had in the process of making this film too, just to see him sit there in front of me and be such a kind and wonderful young man, you know, to see what he's been through. That was, that was pretty fantastic. And what was it, so when you first met him, did, did that sort of validate that this was meant to be? Did some, something happen? I know you said it was emotion, but did you feel something say, this is right? Well, we were already making the movie when we got the chance to meet John and Joyce. So, I was just fascinated to see. I wanted to see him in real life. I wanted to just say, you know, what's your life going to be like? What are you going to do with your life now? How did it change you? And, you know, I do think that it's really important to him to be 
someone who can inspire others, and I think he will do that in his life. So I do think that he found a great sense of purpose. But I, I was so excited to be able to tell their story as a family too. It was important. It's a great story, and the, and the power of prayer is throughout the whole film. Yeah. Do you do you believe or do you agree that prayer played a major role in his in sort of his survival? I have to believe that. I do have to believe that. I can't see. I think that they channeled just a greater power, and that they were able to in some way send this energy to him, whether it was through a miracle, divine inspiration. I, I don't know the answers to those questions, but I can just tell you that their combined energy did something to help him fight his way through it. I agree. And I know you, you spoke earlier and you say, you know, a lot of the films you create, I mean, you, you, you talk about the audience and what, what you give to the audience. What do these films do for you personally? I mean, I can see just sitting here, you have an emotional connection to them, but what do they do for you? Like, what is this film going to do for you personally? You know, it's interesting because I work in the entertainment industry and it's a glamorous job to some degree. It's also a difficult job. But there are many times in my life when I've watched firemen at work I've seen teachers trying to teach classrooms full of children. I've seen missionaries and people who go to other countries and do things like Doctors Without Borders, people that do things that aren't having a glamorous time of it. And it makes me wonder why I do what I do and what I do to give back. And in some way, I think that being able to give someone a gift of going in a theater for two hours and seeing a movie and a story that inspires them and transports them from maybe the problems of their daily life and makes them really feel something is a gift. And so that's what this movie will do for me and the films that I've made in the past have done for me. And they definitely do. I mean, a film like this has the ability to connect us, but to connect people regardless of faith, yeah. regardless it, of cultural differences. It makes me feel like I'm giving something back to the world and it validates the job. You're using your God-given talent, you're the God-given talent. Thank you. I, that's true. That's true. Yep. Somehow, no, you are. You did. <laughs> you brought us all together. I mean, this is a fantastic story. Thank you. Um, I asked the question, but from your point of view, do you think a film like this has the ability to connect people, regardless of faith, regardless of any differences? Oh yes, I do. Absolutely, absolutely. Because it's it's a story that could happen to anybody. I mean, you'd have to live on a lake and go on it, but there, it's not just that. That's a metaphor for things that can happen to people anywhere. It's three kids playing on a kind of warm January afternoon, they are taking pictures of themselves, they're doing selfies, they're joking around, and then all of a sudden the unthinkable happens. And, and it just goes to show you that you can't take anything for granted in life, that you have to just know that every moment you're blessed with what you've been blessed with, and that you have to accept the graces that you've been given and be able to find the strength to go through when things get tough. And I feel like that story says that in such a universal way. And that's why I wanted to be one of the people who tell it. Good. And thank you for doing this film. Thank you. I think this film will do a lot for you as well. I, I think well so. Well, I hope we all support it. That's I what will, we have. We, we need audiences to come and see it <laughs> so that we can keep doing it. Thank you so much. Well, that's our show for today. I hope you enjoyed it. Always remember, we have the ability to inspire and evangelize through our words and actions. Till next time, thanks for walking with us.